Once again, I'm posting just before I go to sleep and before the clock passes midnight. So to make up for my previous um, hibernation, ah, I want to recap before too long, too long, no, ah, share English. Today, I want to pick a very long one, just to practice my personal practice. The source is from this particular magazine. Uh, as you can see, it's called New Generation Psychology. And the article that I picked um, is, I think, um, quite interesting. So it's called, Do Your Friends Have More Friends Than You? Your Popularity Index and What It Means. Okay, 你朋友比你更多朋友吗? 你的受欢迎的指数是什么? 以及它的意义这样子? So like I said, with this particular exercise, we just I'm just going to read uh, for the sake of reading um, and don't worry too much about um, comprehension. Okay, 就是纯粹为了念而念,就是练习朗读这样子. <coughs> Obviously, you don't have to read the article that I'm reading. It's just a good exercise for you, knowing that someone is doing this particular exercise. Right. Oh, that's what I can. <clears throat> In these technologically driven times, making friends has to has become very easy and simple. People make more online friends than offline friends. People brag about the number of friends they have on Facebook and other social networking platforms. But have you ever observed that most of your most your friends have a massive list of friends and are hanging out together, whereas you are sitting alone at home? Yes, it's true that all your friends actually have a lot of friends than you do. This is known as friendship paradox, which was invented in 1991 by sociologist Scott Feld. Basically, he learned while studying the structure of social networking platforms that some way, pe that some way everybody is not that popular as their friends. Friendship paradox. Understanding how the social networks was built and how they function was when Scott discovered that everyone is actually not that popular than their friends. The science of us explains it further that this paradox happens to those people who are predominantly social. Although the greater part of people have smaller close-knit group of friends, whereas there are few people who have a larger circle of friends. This is exactly where the paradox operates. People who are identified as social butterflies and have a lot of friends are expected to be counted as one of your friends. When they are your friends, this knocks the average of friends your full groups of friends have. Hence, this means that on a given average, all your mates will have more friends than you do. Lately, a group of a group researchers, a group of researchers ordered on a, an assignment to basically find out if the friendship paradox relates only to social network platforms and hence due to which the 1991 paradox study reappeared. To understand, the researchers went through 200 million tweets from, from 5.8 million users and examined the followers and following base for each. This study mostly assessed everyone's social media influence by going through their level of engagement on the online platforms such as retweets, likes, and shares. Social media paradox. Social media platforms work the same way as friendship paradox works. Just like on social media platforms, people are more likely to be following people with more followers and who have, more, who have much more engagement than them. This clearly means that people will follow those who, pop, who are popular than them. Concept of popularity. Children give a lot of importance to be popular in school and college years since. In their childhood, most kids consider popularity more important than just friendship. For adolescents, conforming and being part of the popular game was more important than anything. Attractive, athletic, wealthy, good dresses with a happening lifestyle people were known as popular wherever they go. Moreover, popularity is also associated with being friends with other popular people. There are two types of popular people that researchers have pointed out. One is popular pro-social, and the second is popular antisocial. 
The pro-social people are good people who do well in life and act in friendly ways towards their peers. They can even handle difficult situations in a positive way, not resorting to aggressive or manipulative behavior. The anti-social popular people are the so-called cool people who are socially skilled but are not kind-hearted. They project themselves as tough people who tend to be good in sports but are not good in studies. They are socially manipulative people who tend to use others for their whims and fancies. Such people tend to become bullies also during their school life. Being popular is a good thing. For some, it's a great, great feeling to be the center of attraction and popularity. But with positives, there are few negatives of being popular too. If we look at the downside of popularity, basically it is associated to hazardous behavior such as smoking, alcohol, alcoholism, drugs, and drugs. Unnecessary emphasis on popularity mainly involves a misleading perception on relationships. Popularity makes you focus on self-image goals rather than focusing on empathetic goals, which in turn leads people to feel aggressive, nervous, depressed, and detached. Extroversion equals popularity. Being an extrovert makes you popular in your friend circle. Even the people with similar kind of extroversion are expected to become friends. The chief motive is homophily, 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 because social people only unite with Fellow social people, as their networks balance out the extroverts only. On the other hand, introverts will probably be friends with another introvert, as their network shows the friendship paradox, but on a lesser level. Hence, our view of the world through a biased lens, which makes all feel that we are less loved than our friends. The impression that others are more social than us is created because of this view. Um, hence, we see a bias towards considering others to be more extroverted than they perceive to be. Moreover, the extrovert introverts are in a better position as they are socially much conscious than the extroverts. A study shows that the network extroversion bias is happening and is more noticeable in extroverts. Hence, our view of the world through a... Okay, I can't even do that. Dangerous popularity. Frankly speaking, there is no harm in understanding and following this popularity trend to a certain level. It's learning about new style of dressing, slangs, musical taste, or food preference. People who, do, people who don't know these may put themselves up for rejection by their peers. Distinct personality and exclusivity are immense. But when it comes to relationship, it all begins with distinguished likeness. Make friends with popular people can also enhance popularity but you might end up losing your old friends. For example, if in a college, a girl stops hanging out with her old friends and starts to spend time with her new friends who are the popular gang in college, the girl's old friend will feel hurt. After this, this girl, if this girl is treated badly by the popular gang, she may feel really sad and depressed as she has lost both set of friends, the new as well as the old. In conclusion, in friendships, what really matters is quality than rather than quantity. It doesn't matter if, per, if, a pers if person A has one of the friends and you have four friends. You don't share your life, your secrets, and your struggles with those 100 friends. You share your precious moments with just those four very close friends of yours. If you want help from these 100 friends, you won't get it, but your close friends will jump to help you to get out of any situation. Hence, be very grateful for having your close friends in life who make your life worth living. Ignore those thoughts at the back of your mind that tell you how your friends are more popular than you. Well, <coughs> so I don't know how much you understood um, based, uh, on this, based on this article. Um, I did uh, try to understand as I read along, uh, though, you know, for this, I mean, for the purpose of this, you, sh you shouldn't focus too much on reading because pronunciation is the key for this particular exercise. But um, in case you want to know what this article is about, it's talking about how friendship work and um, you, um, someone, or generally speaking, people don't realize that they, their friends would have more friends than them. Okay, but the bottom line is, um, don't worry, it's not a competition uh, quantity, is not as important as quality. You may have many friends, but few is enough because those few will make you feel stronger and more 
reliable, you can trust the few friends, then those 100 friends. Right. Um, 这边呃，这边刚念的时候，我发现有几个错误了。这个文章其实写的比较，嗯，可能没有人嗯很仔细去看他的文法，感觉有一点不顺。But that's not important. Um, at least the words are not too difficult, um, and serves a good practice for this particular exercise. Have a nice evening.